I hope you're ready for an epic fun pen review, because this video will give you just that. Welcome to the channel again. Like always, it's me, your host, Amy from PenVenture, and in this video, join me and let's dive deep into reviewing the Onoto Hurricane, an awesome fountain pen uniting in this design a lot of history, a lot of heritage, and a lot of interesting facts. So let's see what's so special about it. Don't get me wrong, but at any given moment there are a lot of impressive fountain pens out there. By now you know that I'm an Italian fountain pen collector and anything that's outside this has to be pretty impressive to find its way in my personal fountain pen collection. So the fountain pen in front of us, it's a personal fountain pen from my personal fountain pen collection, which I cannot wait to showcase its feature, its stories, uh, the writing sample and anything and everything about it because it is an awesome fountain pen. I am a huge fan of the Onoto series that is showcasing impressive pieces and nuggets of history in their lineup of fountain pens and I do own a Onoto Spitfire, this fountain pen right here. It was uh, reviewed on our channel. If you're interested to see that review, I'm going to link it up there. And basically, it's a fountain pen made from aluminum that came from a Spitfire airplane that defended Britain in the Battle of Britain. This is impressive, limited edition of only 100 pieces. All of them are sold out. I got noticed that Onoto came up with a new one. And you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen a few close-up pictures with it so you are familiar with its looks. I'm going to try in this video to showcase the ownership experience, what you get when you order a Onoto Hurricane, then we will go into the story of this fountain pen because the story is so so impressive and I did a lot of research and uh, I hope I'm not going to get you bored with history because I'm a history buff. Then we will go into a side-by-side -side size comparison, then writing sample with the gorgeous 18 karat gold nib, which I left it as it came out of the box. And in the end, I'm gonna share some of my personal opinions and we are going to end the video because I don't want to make it too long. I'll dive right into the ownership experience. This is the box of the fountain pen. This is what you get when you order a Noto Hurricane. Here we have the booklet with a very, very nice imprint of the design of the airplane right here on the first page, 12th of December, 2021. This is the date that I acquired this fountain pen. Then we have the limited edition number, triple zero of 250. So big, big thank you to the Onoto team who made it possible for me to have this fountain pen in this specific number. TMB Art Metal, it is a company that is um, providing the aluminum from this iconic airplanes to Onoto in order to be created into fountain pens. Let's move further and we have a lot of information about the Battle of Britain, the pilot, uh, Ray Holmes, which is the hero of our story, but let's get uh, his uh, story uh, in a few moments. Then we have uh, pictures with the crashed aircraft because it was crashed. This is the crashing place of that airplane. Maybe some of you guys are familiar. This is pictures from the time that it was excavated. And this is the pilot, uh, Ray Holmes, right here. And he got presented with a piece of uh, his aircraft that was uh, crashed. Here we have the control column for the Hawker Hurricane, which if you don't believe me, it was excavated. And this is the control column that 
was holded by Ray Holmes in his hands when he pushed on the button and activated its machine guns. Let's move further, let's see, let's see, this is how the aluminum got melted and created into billets that were used. This is the parts of the fountain pen that were costed from that aluminum. And we have the fountain pen in its glory right here in the final part of the booklet. Let's open the box and see what we have inside. Beautiful, beautiful wood box. Let's open it right here, resting securely. We have the Onoto Hurricane. On the lid, we have the certificate of authenticity with the date, limited edition number, and the signature of the chairman at Onoto. Let's put everything aside and let's focus on this fountain pen because it's so, so freaking insane. It's iconic. It has a lot of history behind it and uh, it will be a shame to not mention history first because from that history, we can take on a few key aspects that find their own way on this fountain pen. I did some research and I want to showcase facts as they are. So please excuse me, I wanna use my notebook right here that has a lot of information regarding the story of this fountain pen. And actually, I think that I already tried to record this video for three times, forgetting to press the record button. So a lot of these things right here are embedded into my mind and will be forever like this. And let's see who is Ray Holmes and all of the history facts regarding this creation. First of all, time span. Battle of Britain, August, September, 1940. This is right after uh, Hitler took on France and started a very, very massive amphibious operation named Sea Lion, which the first step of this operation was the aerial bombardment of Britain. Like with all war stories, we need a hero. Our hero, Ray Holmes, which was a pilot flying with the Royal Air Force, was flying with the 504 Squadron, trying to repel enemy bombers from bombing the heart of London. On September the 15th, Ray and his squadron noticed three enemy bombers that were passing British anti-air defense at 4,000 meters off the ground, a ferocious aerial battle commences. So our hero, Ray Holmes, got sprayed by the M enemy bomber flamethrower. You can imagine at 4,000 meters in the air, it wasn't that effective, and it only managed to uh, smear its windshield, the um, windshield of Ray Holmes, a Hawker Hurricane. As soon as he had a visible, clear shot, he unloaded his ammo on one of the enemy bombers. And also, he noticed that the actual battle was getting closer and closer to Buckingham Palace. That's not a good thing. That's quite an important um, landmark of uh, Britain. He had to stop this dogfight, to say so. He, one way or the other. Later in the interview, Ray mentioned that it wasn't like a calculated decision. It was something split in the heat of battle. On the moment, Ray decided that he ran out of ammo and wanted to stop this. So he actually took his Hawker Hurricane and clipped with his wing the enemy bomber, the Nazi bomber, making both planes collide in mid-air. Then um, the Hawker Hurricane, which was piloted by Ray Holmes, entered into a nosedive, crashing, and also in the process taking out the enemy bomber. The pilot, Ray Holmes, uh, managed to bail out. He was declared a war hero, and ever since then, September 15 became Battle of Britain Day, and it is commemorated ever since, and it also meant that the name Ray Holmes was synonymous with British patriotism, self-sacrifice, and dedication to defend the country from the enemies. Pretty much that's the story behind this fountain pen, and actually a small part of Ray's uh, Hawker Hurricane find its way on this fountain pen that we have in front of us, the Onoto Hawker Hurricane limited edition fountain pen. Now let's get to details because we are here for a fountain pen review. So let's see where is that specific metal that came from Ray 
uh, plane. And it's right here where we start with the cap finial. This is shaped very, very nice. It is the cone of the propeller engine from the aircraft. It's very, very easy to identify this with that specific part of the plane. So it's nice to see that even for someone that's not familiar with the story, it can very quickly understand that this part comes from an aircraft. This is made out of aluminum that was uh, casted from the crashed plane that Ray Holmes flew. And it's very, very nice to actually hold a piece of that plane history uh, in your personal fountain pen collection. Moving further, we have the clip. The clip is shaped just like a propeller blade. It's a little bit uh, tarnish right now on it. We can see engraved Hurricane P2725TM-B and you want to have something that can tie you directly to that specific plane on this uh, creation because you are proud to have such a nugget of history in your collection. Right here we have the silhouette of a plane Opposite to the clip, we have the important date, 15 September 1940, and we have the limited edition number, triple zero of 250 fountain pens. Overall, you can clearly see that the fountain pen has very streamlined design, a cigar shape. This is how we call the shape, elongated, very streamlined with both ends tapering in. Now we have one complete turn. We uncap the fountain pen and we are greeted by this beautiful, beautiful Onoto gold nib. 18 karat gold, two-tone. It is very, very beautiful. We have a 7 and M, which is the nib size medium. This time I went with the medium. On my Spitfire, I have an F, which was grounded to an extra fine, although it's quite wet and it's not that extra fine, but at least it is, in my opinion, for me. And this beautiful, gorgeous nib is powered by an ABS plastic feed. This feed keeps up very, very well with this nib. It offers a very rich and consistent ink flow. I will show you this in the writing sample. Now let's move into some of the ergonomics. And we have the section very, very simple shaped with this beveled edge, which prevents your fingers from slipping towards the nib. Then the section starts to pick up in girth towards the cap threads right here. The cap threads are made out of metal. This will tell you that this uh, threads are quite smooth and very, very nicely machined. Then we have something which I call a very sharp step up right here. And this uh, step up may be preventing you if you grip your front pants slightly higher, like you've seen right here, to actually get comfortable with this fountain pen. Although I haven't met too many people that are holding the fountain pants as drastical as I'm demonstrating right now. Anyway, you need to take this into consideration if you uh, grip your fountain pens slightly higher. Now let's move forward with the barrel of the fountain pen. It's very beautiful, very streamlined. It's just like the body of an aircraft to say so. It is displaying this beautiful, beautiful uh, lines which are very, very nicely integrated into the design of the fountain pen. And they do offer a very nice effect to the overall shape and the visual impact of this uh, writing instrument. The body of the fountain pen is made from um, resin and it is displaying this beautiful camo effect with olive green and this very nicely uh, dull tarnished brown which screams army. And um, now let me showcase the filling system. Let's take out the barrel and inside you will find a cartridge converter, which was provided by Onoto. It comes with the fountain pen. You can use this fountain pen with standard international cartridges. I wouldn't call it a good idea if you want to eyedropper or convert this fountain pen because it does have some small metal parts, which I think will prevent um, you from getting a very good eyedropper conversion on your fountain pen. Usually metal corrodes in combination with ink. I would stay away from making this fountain pen an eyedropper converter fountain pen. You can pose this fountain pen, you can put the 
cap like so and it now becomes a little bit back heavy in my opinion. I don't use this fountain pen posted on the Onoto Spitfire. It's not possible. It's metal on metal and I wouldn't go as far as saying that's a good idea to post metal on metal in regards of fountain pens because they do scratch and uh, it is not nice. That sums up the details of the Hawker Hurricane Onoto fountain pen. Now I think it's time to go into a side-by-side -side size comparison. I want you guys to see this fountain pen side-by-side -side with its sibling, the Spitfire and other fountain pens from my personal collection. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't know them. I'm an Italian fountain pen collector, so probably it will be next to some Italian fountain pens. So let's proceed and let's see. Here we have the Onoto Spitfire standing next to his sibling, the Onoto Hurricane, Leonardo Furore, Visconti Homo Sapiens and ASE Bologna Extra. Cap the fountain pen measures 155 millimeters and it is very much the same like with the Onoto Spitfire and also the total weight of the fountain pen fully inked and capped is 29 grams like so. Now let's see how it looks uncapped next to the same fountain pens. Pretty much the story is the same. Uncapped the fountain pen sits in between a Leonardo Furore and an ASC Bologna Extra. It is an oversized fountain pen. It's not too big, it's not too weighty. It's still practical and it can be used in extended periods of writing without getting your hands fatigued and your fingers cramping. Dimensions, uncapped the fountain pen measures 137 millimeters like so. Total weight of the fountain pen uncapped like so, it's 18 grams. I'm going to show you these two fountain pens, the Onoto Spitfire and the Onoto Hurricane. Try to guess how much weight does the Onoto Spitfire have. Try to guess how much is in between those because this is made out of resin, this is made out of aluminum. Aluminum may be not that weighty, but still this Onoto Spitfire packs 50 grams and this one, the Onoto Hurricane, 29 grams. So it's roughly around 38, 35% more weight for Donato Spitfire, different from Donato Hurricane. Now, let me get my notebook and let me show you how this nib is writing. The pen on Noto Hurricane, the nib, 18 CT, and this is a medium. The ink is beautiful, and I had to match my outfit with the fountain pen and also with the ink, so you're getting uh, quite a lot of bonus points. And we have private reserve avocado. The paper. Tomoy River paper, 52 GSM, and this is a Hobo Nietzsche notebook. I begin to love them. Let's see the flow. Uh, this is just how it came out of the box. I haven't tinkered with this nib at all, and we do have a beautiful, beautiful ink flow. It is tamed. It's in the middle. I wouldn't call it a super, super um, fire hose wet nib, but anyway, it's just the way I like my nibs to write. Normal figure of eights, and it's a quite wet and beautiful medium. I wouldn't say it's a skinny medium, um, but of course, I wouldn't say that this is a broad. Let's apply a little bit of pressure and let's try to flex this nib. Don't try this at home, kids because uh, it's quite a stiff nib and I wouldn't want you to have a snail tines situation to say so. You can squeeze down some line variation, but I wouldn't push it any more than this because you want to enjoy it after this. Let's move on with the most important sentence that we can use right now to demonstrate how this pen is writing and we have the quick brown fox jumps over 
the lazy dog. This is how this fondant pen is writing. I love this nib. I love the way this fondant pen handles and uh, I do enjoy using it. I've been carrying it with me for the past two or three weeks. Ever since then, I've tried to, uh, every, every time I've tried a different ink and it always performed beautiful. The nib has a slight feedback, uh, pencil-like feedback, very, very small uh, way of rewarding the user. It is time to dive into my personal opinions. Probably it's best to say from the get going that personal opinions are personals because they are my reflections upon this design, this fountain pen after getting to know it and to use it for the past few months. Maybe some of them will be good points for you to take into consideration and probably they will not be that good because they are personals and they are mine. So maybe for you this fountain pen it's different. One of the things that I want to point out regarding this fountain pen is that it is light. This is the way I see it. This is the way I'm comparing it to other fountain pens from my collection. For me, I observe that I love oversized fountain pens, but from time to time, I do enjoy to have something different, something less weighty like this on Otto Hurricane to enjoy it for uh, three, four, five, six pages uh, continuous of writing. And I do love this fountain pen because it offers the possibility for myself to do just that. Anyway, it's different and you need to develop a taste. I've started in my hobby with double broads and stub nibs and I came down to extra fines at this moment. I've started with weighty fountain pens and probably I will make a dive into less weighty fountain pens now or maybe later, I don't know. It's taste, it's developing while you collect fountain pens. It's a great fountain pen, it's a privilege to own, it's a beautiful fountain pen, it's a conversation starter. Whoever comes in my office always looks for fountain pens right here in the studio on my table and I have two fountain pens upon which I always take a close look and I take them like this and say, you want to know the story of this fountain pen? That means that I'm proud to own them and I'm proud of the history that's behind them and this is all that matters. In regards of pricing, this fountain pen as it is, it's priced around 800 euros and it's less pricey in comparison to the Onoto Spitfire. Anyway, there are a lot of options in regards of this fountain pens. If you order them from the Onoto website, I will leave you the link down below if you're interested in the Hurricane. The Spitfire is already sold out. Anyway, on the Hurricane, you have different nib grinds. Uh, you can engrave your name initials. You can opt for a different box. Uh, added weight. Yeah, you can add weight. I didn't check the box and it came like so. If you want a little bit of weight, you can check that box and it has a small fee and it can make your front vents a little bit weighty, your Onoto Hurricane. The pricing may increase from 800 or come down uh, a little bit under 800. Pretty much that's kind of it in regards of this fountain pen. I hope you enjoyed my review and uh, all of the history facts regarding this fountain pen, I'm really proud and really happy that I was able to record a video review after three times trying. Don't forget to scroll down below if you want to have uh, the details for our website, our social media accounts, my phone number, my email. If you have any questions, suggestions for the Notre Hurricane and my content, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be quick to answer those. Thank you very, very much for uh, spending so much time on the Penventure YouTube channel watching my content. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy my content, don't forget to give this video and my other videos a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm to reach out to many more just like you. If you want to support my passion and pen venture as a YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're not subscribed yet, just click there and turn the notification bell on. Like so, you will know whenever we have new content on our platform. And if you want to see more quality content from pen venture and myself right now, just click here and watch this video. Enjoy. Like always, I'm your host, Amy, and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe. Bye bye.